right, so when I start to tackle this page, I am gonna just kind of jump right in. It's showing me a food web. And all a food web is, is multiple food chains put together in an ecosystem. So when I say a food chain, uh, I'm gonna be looking at something like um, this grass feeds the rabbit, the rabbit feeds the fox, and the fox feeds the mountain lion. Um, so that is specifically what I'm looking at when I say a food chain. So when I start mixing that specific food chain in with others, that's how I get a food web. So the questions are just going to kind of ask you some questions about this food web. So when I look at number one, it says, which one is both a producer and an autotroph? And that's just going to be straight vocabulary. Um, so if you remember when we did autotroph, um, the prefix auto um, meant self and trough or trophic um, meant feeder or energy. Um, so when I think of what a self feeder is or what type of organism would give its own energy, I'm going to think of a plant. Okay, and a plant produces its own energy. So what is the plant that's in this food, uh, food web here? And it's gonna be right here, it's the grass. So producer is another word for autotroph, autotroph producer. Which organism is sometimes a predator and sometimes a prey. So when I think of predator, I'm gonna think of something that hunts for food or eats another organism. And then when I think of prey, I'm gonna think of something that is eaten by a different organism. So I'm gonna kind of look in this um, food, um, food web here, uh, the mountain lion. Nothing in this food web is eating the mountain lion, so I can kind of, you know, just kind of cross him off. Um, if I come down to the lower level and look at the mouse and the rabbit, um, really, um, let's see, the rabbit is eating the grass and that's not really a predation kind of thing. That's not a predator. Um, but the rabbit is eaten by the fox, so the rabbit would be considered prey. Uh, the mouse, let's say, where does it get its energy from here? The mouse eats the um, dragonfly. Okay. So the mouse eats the dragonfly and then the mouse feeds the fox. Okay. So it hunts the dragonfly. So it's a predator and it feeds the fox. So it also becomes the prey. So that organism, the mouse, ooh, too close, the mouse, um, it, it eats the dragonfly which means that it is a predator and it is eaten by the fox which means that it is prey good deal all right so speaking of this little fox which two organisms are the fox eating what does the fox eat? Um, that was bad. You can make fun of me. It's okay. Uh, the fox, if we're drawing our arrows, so what feeds the fox? So the arrows that are pointing towards the fox are going to come from this rabbit. Okay. And we're looking for another arrow that is pointing. So right here. So the mouse also feeds the fox. That's catchy though, huh? What does the fox eat? That's catchy. Um, <laughs> does anybody miss my jokes yet? Um, all right, so what would happen to the population of rabbits if the population of foxes um, disappeared? So we know that the fox eats the rabbit, okay? If there were no more foxes um, to eat, I wish I could talk right as fast as I talk. Uh, if there were no more foxes to eat the rabbits, the population of rabbits 
would get too big. So um, the foxes probably keep the rabbit population in check. If we take out the foxes and all of a sudden uh, rabbits are going to be left to kind of overproduce, then that means that they're going to be eating more grass and they might run out of grass, which would lead to starvation in the rabbits. Um, but also the fox is a food source for the mountain lions. So now either the mountain lions are going to start to go hungry or they're going to start eating a lot more rabbits. Um, so it would kind of just cause a chain reaction and affect things like that. Um, so as the organisms in the food web hunt and obtain food, they use up energy, um, which is true. Each time an organism eats another, they only obtain 10% of that organism's energy. Uh, when we talked about cellular energy in that set of notes, we talked about the rule of 10% um, and how each organism only gets 10% of the energy. So which organism in the food web has the most amount of energy? Uh, we said that all energy, either directly or indirect, uh, directly comes from the sun, okay? So we forgot that the, you know, the sun is part of this, you know, pyramid. And the sun gives its energy directly to those autotrophs. So having the most energy would be the grass. Oop. Wow, why won't my pen write? Okay. I broke it. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. So I guess I'm just writing in highlighter. Mm, okay. Um, all right. So which organism in the food web has the least amount of energy and how do you know? So the least amount of energy. So that's going to be which has the kind of most things that feed into it. So remember when I kind of counted those chains of four? Um, I don't know why I can't write. Oh, well, guess we're going to write in highlighter. Here, here, and here. Okay, that's a chain of four. So in this case, the mountain lion is going to have the least amount of energy. Okay, but also if we kind of look, it depends on where we're going. There's another chain of four. Uh, excuse me. Um, so to the dragonfly, to the mouse, and then back over to the fox. So it could also be the fox. I mean, it definitely is the mountain lion, but it could also be the fox. Uh, sorry, I apologize for whatever happened to my pen at the end there. Hopefully you can read